will exhaust my uh, amount of French, so the rest will be in English. I'm sure you can understand me. Um, you have uh, on hand, I hope, the sheet of uh, directions. Uh, those who have already done it probably won't need that. And you downloaded a pattern like so, and you put it on a block of wood like so, and cut it out. And when we're done, as one of you has found out, we hope to have one like this, more or less. I'm sure that most of you will do a better one than I uh, um, have done. This particular one that I used for, uh, for the model uh, was made in uh, pine. And I thought I better try one in basswood because uh, it makes a better one. And uh, I guess that side of the screen, not quite so much light on it, a little easier to see. Um, so this one not painted yet, but uh, everything's done on that one. And this is what we'll be working on today. And um, so what I do to start with is, um, and I just eyeball it, I put a mark in um, along the, the front, about an eighth of an inch in, and I run that line all the way around. from the top of the ear to the top of the ear, like so. And then I put a second one in, another uh, eighth of an inch or so. And I'm working today on a piece of pine and it's uh, a three quarter inch. So this second one uh, comes about halfway back on the block. Having done that, I don't want my ear quite this far back. I want it a little further forward. So between the first and second mark, I will put a, uh, a second line and behind the second mark, I put a line and that's where my, I want my ear to go. And I will do that on both sides. and we're ready to start carving. Um, I, I'm using my trusty old uh, flex cut. Um, and <clears throat> I start with a, a stop cut by the ear. I want to come back to where the ear is going to be for starters, and then we'll, we'll start going around the face. So in front of the ears, I put a stop cut and I take a little out and a little more. And as you know, when you're working with pine, you have to make sure that your stop cut is good or a whole bunch of stuff is going to disappear. So um, working down until I have the ear back, the stop cut back in front of the, of the ear line. And working without gloves, I turn it back and forth so that I can try to keep my uh, thumb out of the way, my fingers out of the way. I uh, don't want to take time to go and get a Band-Aid. I didn't bring those with me this morning or this afternoon. So now I have the, the ear on the one side, uh, the wood removed back to the ear and uh, I will do the same on the other side.
So have we got both the uh, ears back part way? We won't worry about behind the ear until close to the end of the carving, uh, but I'd like to get where the ear is going to be on the side defined first. Okay, um, I can see a few of you. Let's see if I can see a few more here. All right. Thumbs up if you're ready to go on to the next. Okay. The next stop cut I make on it is uh, just um, at the bottom of the uh, of the hat line across. Oh, and one of the things that I did after um, cutting out the the pattern with this uh, just the outline of it, I uh, I cut part one so that I could get the chin on, and everything is oriented towards the ear, and with the uh, chin on. Uh, another little cutout, and I could get the nose in the right place. Got to be careful with this one, the nose wants to come off. So a stop cut across under the, uh, the hat brim. And then from the top of the, uh, the eyebrow, to the hat brim, I do a, a, a takeaway cut. Um, John Bowser could probably tell me what you call that second cut. I know what a stop cut is. I've been calling this a slice cut, I think. Just a cup cut under the, the hat brim. So you, you've got a little bit of the hat defined. That's about all you need to do for the hat. And what I want to do next then is to take the beard under the chin back to the first, uh, the first side line. And uh, so make a, a stop cut around the, uh, the face. I guess since I'm the only one with a mic on, I should be uh, whistling while I work or uh, have the radio on in the background or something while I'm not talking because I find it hard to talk and work at the same time. So with the stop cut made, I'm gonna to start to take the wood away uh, around the face and under the chin uh, back to the uh, first stop cut uh, depth so that it will be a uh, two flat surfaces. Because I'm right handed when I'm doing the right side of the face, maybe I should tip this down just a bit more. Put a table in front of the TV in our den, uh, in front of the uh, computer in our den, so that I could uh, have a focus more or less on my, my hands. On the right side of the beard, I do it with a push cut on the left side of the beard, again, because I'm right-handed, um, I'm doing it with a, a draw cut.
it's uh, this part of it is kind of like um, doing relief car carving because uh, you're working for different depths and I want the beard to be back and coming up just under the ears, just in front of the ears. And um, uh, that will work. And I want most of the face, except for the nose, to be back an eighth of an inch, and the beard will be back pretty much to a quarter of an inch. I think that's what I'm doing. You'll notice how much I'm referring to the notes, <laughs> because uh, I've done a few now because I didn't want to be doing it in front of you guys until I had a better idea of what I was doing. And uh, at the moment, I'm not sure that I've accomplished that. It's two o'clock. I'm not too worried about whether it's uh, quite smooth here at the bottom. That's a little rough, but it's going to go further back uh, when I get the uh, face lowered. But um, for now, that's uh, about where I want it to be. And uh, you can kind of see on both sides, the beard is in front of the ears, but um, under the hat brim and the, the face itself has been, uh, it's uh, standing proud, I guess is the term. Um, so uh, how many uh, have, uh, have the face uh, standing out? Thumb up? Just so I have some idea. I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to get ahead of you. But of course you can uh, ask to unmute and uh, um, ask a question whenever. And if I'm going too fast, just tell me to slow down. Uh, I'm not a very fast carver, so that's not likely. The next thing I want to do is to work on the face and I want to get the nose to be the most prominent uh, item on this. So I'm going to make a stop cut around the nose and I'm going to cut up to it and uh, just kind of from the brow down. So that allows for the nose to kind of uh, begin to uh, uh, stand out a bit. Don't worry about the lines on the face. They'll be drawn back in a little later. But um, at this point, we're going to take the face down further. So what I often have done, just tidy up along here a little bit. Um, just so that I am sure that I'm going to be able to see it when I get uh, some of the face uh, removed, I will put, just run the pencil line across around under the face um, because the face is going to come down to almost that level 
the face will be almost the level of where the beard is now, and the beard will be going down further to where the second line is. Does that make sense? So now I start to remove the wood from the brow down to uh, on the face around the nose and down to um, so that it's almost the same level as the uh, as the beard. And I don't want to take it right up to the hat, so I'll make a, a stop cut. I may take it down more, but for now, a little stop cut at the brow so that I can to get the, uh, the the face taken down to that level. I will often make the stop cut a little deeper as I go, especially today when I'm using pine because it's so easy to have the knife slip and there goes the nose. I didn't bring my glue today either, so. I do have some in the workshop downstairs. So now the face is also down pretty much to the um, to the level where the beard was before, and uh, at this point um, we can. Um, I don't want to take all of the beard off in front of the ears, but what I do want to do is. Um, what I will do is to make a stop cut at the bottom of the ear, but I'm not going to take it all off from the top to the bottom. I'm going to, I'm going to cut a kind of a, a curve from where the top of the ear is uh, down to the second mark, because the ear is going to be a little bit curve down, downwards from the point down. So how well this will show on the screen, I'm not sure. But um, the ear I'm even having trouble seeing. Of course, you're looking at the other side. I'm... The ear right in here is now down just a little bit deeper. And we're going to take the beard down a little bit, but not too much because you want to see kind of like the sideburn beside the ear and beside the face.
Okay, I'll do that on the other side as well. Just reducing the ear kind of the point sticks somewhat, the top of the ear sticks somewhat forward and uh, we'll take the sideburn part of the beard down a little bit on that side as well. Not right to the ear, but very close. So now the sideburn part is down just about as far as I want it to go. It's standing out maybe a sixteenth of an inch um, from the bottom of the ear. And uh, from under the ear, the uh, beard will go back a little further as well. Um, <clears throat> so now I will take and uh, make the stop cut again around the, the, the face and the chin so that uh, I can take the beard down to that second uh, line around. And I will, after the stop cut, I will start taking more uh, uh, wood around off from the beard on the bottom uh, of the, around the chin. Excuse me, John. Yes. Uh, can you show me the uh, sideburns part? A little closer to the camera, please. Uh, let me try it on this side. In here, uh, the ear is coming down. Um, on I'll the first mark? Yeah, to the, well, no, that's almost, that's, that's all the, the bottom of the ear will be almost at the, uh, yeah, the bottom of the ear right here will be uh, almost as deep as the uh, second, second mark. Okay, thank you. Um, but at the top of the ear, the it'll be halfway between the first and second mark and between the the tip and the and the down here this part of the ear is it's a little bit of a scoop it's not straight down okay perfect okay thank you
About this time last year, Dave McCormick and Harold Peel and myself and our wives were arriving at the hotel in Albufera. And uh, in the days that followed in uh, approximately 20 degree temperatures, we sat beside the pool and uh, did some carving in the afternoon. And then uh, about four o'clock, we went to the bar for a little cup of coffee. So if anyone feels the need for a cup of coffee today, that would be quite in keeping. And John, what would you have in that little cup of coffee? <laughs> Actually, the coffee usually came in a little pint-sized glass. Uh-huh. <laughs> Okay, the bottom part is done now down to the levels that I want. What I need to do, and I usually leave the hat uh, till later, and then um, uh, with the bottom part pretty nearly finished, except for some detail work, uh, then I work on the hat. Uh, but I like to get uh, the face uh, and the beard more or less shaped before I go to the top part of it. So uh, what I want to do now is to uh, take my pencil and I'm going to draw back on the, uh, the smile lines uh, or whatever you call them, these lines beside the nose and the, the mouth. Um, and we'll try to get those Did I come close? One of my problems always has been when, when I started with you guys about uh, 14 years ago now, um, somebody said, if you can't draw it, you can't carve. And I thought, well, there goes that hobby because I couldn't draw a straight line with a ruler. But, uh, because you have to draw things back on after you've started the carving and some of the lines have disappeared. Um, you, you have to, and I have learned to be able to do some car, some drawing, but I still have trouble getting the two smile lines on the two sides that need to be symmetrical. Um, I don't know, my mind just doesn't seem to work that way, but that's close. And, uh, you can do more with a knife. Now, at this point, I like to switch to my uh, detail knife, which is, uh, some of you will have this 30th an annual Ottawa competition. I picked that up somewhere on the other side, it says Helby. And I, I know some of you guys uh, weren't overly impressed with the feel of the handle of these. I like them. They, they work, it works really well for me. And I'm going to do a, a stop cut on the smile lines beside the nose and take a little bit out uh, so that the, uh, the, the cheek begins to, to stand out a bit. And I'll take a little more out from under the nose. And then I'm going to put, uh, uh, we'll work on the, on the, uh, the smile itself. Okay, so stop cut along the smile lines.
Sometimes I think I do better with the, the knife than I do with the pencil. So I've got the, the uh, bit of carving away uh, to allow the smile lines to stand out a bit. And now I will do the uh, under the nose. It's kind of like we're forming the upper lip, I guess, at this point. So that now the nose stands out just a little bit more as well. Hey, John, this process you're using, is this uh, like a process you'd repeat on any face, doing it in this kind of order when you're doing? Ah, a lot of my faces in the past have been done on a corner. And so the process there is considerably different, but yeah, it's not, not too dissimilar. Uh, to what I, any face that I do on the flat, I, I like to get the nose showing first and then the smile lines and then begin to round off the cheeks and whatever. But uh, thank you. So I may take, in order that the upper lip looks more rounded, I may take from the center over to the smile line and just remove a little bit more wood and make that upper lip kind of rounded from one side to the other. So it's a little bit more rounded now. I think when I get the, so the window glare isn't right on or it's probably better for you to see. And uh, it's still pretty rough, but uh, I begin to see the, the upper lip. To get the lower lip, you can do this just with a, a, a knife. and kind of a stop cut under the lower lip and then take away a bit of the, what I'm trying to be careful because this, when people give you pine, you carve in pine. John Bowser, you should understand this. If you have that Scottish background like I do, if they give you something, you use it. So you've got a bit of lower lip, but I never seem to be quite happy with that. So what I have done is to take a gouge and uh, I don't know what number this is. It's one of those sets from Lee Valley 
but this particular one, it depends on how wide a gouge uh, and you want a fairly shallow, let me get this this way. You want a fairly shallow, um, what do you call it, bevel? A shallow, the sh not a U-shape gouge, but a, a flat, kind of a flat gouge. And, um, uh, uh, but only as wide as the space you have under the lip and between the lip and the chin. And I like to take a, a little bit with the gouge. Because I think, and I don't know how visible that will be, but I think it, what it does is to make the lower lip look a little more like a lip. Having done that, the nose is uh, not right yet because it's, it's flat. So I'm gonna take a stop cut at the brow and I'm about two thirds of the, down the nose, I'm gonna do a, a slice cut up to it. And so the nose becomes just a little more, there we are. The nose becomes a little more slanted. It's still straight up on both sides, so I can take a little bit of that off. Now, of course, that also means that the eyebrows are very heavy and they're flat straight across still. So we're going to take some off to the sides and uh, take them back just a little bit so that the eyebrows don't look like um, uh, Frankenstein or a Cro-Magnon man or whatever. Just a little off from the sides. Of the brow looks like one side chipped off already. Just what, what I was wanting. I don't think I wrote this into the instructions. But I am finding that that eyebrow is just too straight across. So what I'm doing is uh, taking just a bit of a notch out beside the nose. the end result of which is that I then have kind of an eye socket um, spot. And it's a little more slanted from the nose, slanted down towards the bottom of the ear. Not, now it may end up with the eyebrow looking like he's a bit surprised. Uh, that depends, but at this point, I will kind of round off the face just a little bit.
I'm going to take where the eyes will be and make that just a little deeper because I have noticed on faces, generally the eye is the deepest part on the face. And so just kind of a little bit of a triangular spot beside the nose and under the eyebrow that's just a little deeper. And because I usually, you know, you can do whatever uh, works for you, but I often will simply paint eyes on a lot of these little things. And, and what I do are, are quick and easy things. And they, uh, they'll go on sidewalk sales or they'll go to church bazaars or whatever. And uh, people will, you, if they buy them, they're usually being kind to me and don't want me to go home feeling really badly. So uh, I, I call them uh, quick and dirty, but they're they're fairly easy. They don't take a long time to do. And uh, I, as far as I'm concerned, the face now is pretty, when I get the beard completed, I may do more on the face, but for the most part, the face is, is now looked after. Having done what I want to do to the face, and how are we for time? It's about 2.30, we've got a half hour. Let's see if we can get the bottom part of this done. We'll, I'll uh, work on the beard next. And basically what I'm doing with the beard is rounding it before I, put on the, the whiskers, I just round it somewhat. And for me, the rounding isn't just taking off the, the sharp edges uh, around it, although that is certainly uh, part of it. But it's also, I'm going to um, take it back a little further under the chin. Uh, I think John Bowser taught me to call that expression undercutting. And he said, you always leave that to the end. I hope I've got it right, John. I have you to blame or thank for anything that I am able to do with a piece of wood, basically. Went to several of your Lee Valley uh, teaching sessions. And uh, I'm very thankful for that. One of the Santas that we still put up every year is the model that you taught us. So I'm going to switch at this point to my V tool. Um, I guess that's probably a 60 degree V. And uh, keep it sharp. And I just beside the, the face, we'll take a little out. And I find that this is often where you have to be particularly aware of the grain because if it catches one way, turn it around and do it the other way. The nice thing about a V tool, it um, 
it's sharp on both sides, so you can do it either way. But you do have to do what the grain will allow you to do. And having, uh, having got that defined just a little more around the face, um, I think it's looking like it needed to be rounded a little more right there. I guess you will notice that I, I do most of my finished work on the bottom before I, I go to the top at all. Um, because the other is just going to be a bit of an accent to what this is all about. A little more of the beard back on the bottom part. And then uh, maybe a little bit before I put the hair on it, on it, I'll just define the nose a little bit also with the V tool. And uh, under the eyebrow. Just tidy things up a little bit there. And then we're ready for, my beards usually come pretty straight down because I don't have a curly beard. So I have no model when I look in the mirror, it has to be a pretty straight down beard. Uh, some of you may be able to suggest to me how I can do things differently, but, uh, and I, uh, I take it up towards the chin uh, as much as I can, then I turn around and I take it the other way down over the edge. Keep remembering I'm trying to do this. And to me, it looks like I'm doing it in a mirror, but I understand that you guys see it as if uh, you were actually facing me, so. I don't hesitate to take the uh, whiskers over onto the side a bit because uh, it's going to be not uh, quite three-dimensional, but uh, it's a cross between three dimensions and uh, two dimensions. The back remains, in mine anyway, the back remains flat. And uh, that allows me to uh, either put a, a brooch uh, backing on it so it can be worn uh, somebody out on a St. Patrick's Day feast. Maybe we'll have enough people like Sue who have had the, uh, their uh, shot and will be able to have a St. Patrick's Day party. Uh, maybe. I live with hope. Now, if this particular gouge uh, V tool 
if it is um, too wide to get up under the chin without poking the chin, you can use a, I've got a second V tool that's a very small, very fine, same angle, but a very, uh, very small tip and it will get in under that. Um, I like to get it as close under the chin as I can, but I don't want to leave a bunch of uh, marks on the chin. And I think somebody else told me one time, if you think you've got enough hair on the beard or in the hair, uh, put, put in a, 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 a line between each of the lines you've already got. You need twice as many as you think you need. There's pretty much the beard, the face, and if I'm uh, in doubt, if I'm in doubt, I will draw on a couple of little eyes so that when I'm looking at it, I say to myself, once the painting's done, that's pretty much the way it's going to look. Uh, we can uh, also, the ears, they're about as far back as you want them. And so uh, I like to do a little stop cut about, a, oh, maybe an eight, probably less than an eighth of an inch in from the side. And basically, and I'm being very careful because this is pine and it's hard to keep my fingers out of the way. But I just take a little out of the inside of the ear and that's like, that's the front of the ear. Um, and I like to leave the back down until we've done the hat. And I, I would like to leave it at this point for today. Uh, if you're all eh, willing and interested in coming back for uh, doing the hat and the back of the ears and uh, uh, this will give us some time to visit. Uh, it's now a quarter to three. I think three o'clock is when we're scheduled to be complete. Um, whoever is listening to me who's in charge, Andy or Patrick or whoever, do I have the timing about right on that? Yeah, we're doing fine, John. It's, as I said before, that, you know, it's up to you when you feel that, you know, you've done enough today. And I, uh, I'll look around, and the head's all nodding, or they do a little catch up at, in, uh, in your own time. You can stop uh, here. And... Anyone who's done a toop um, can finish this now. Because it's no, it, yeah, it's no, it's Santa's that I've done or whatever. It's all pretty much the same kind of shape. What we have is over here, a little uh, tassel. And then a little uh, where the tube comes over the top. And I, I like to take from about maybe a quarter of an inch back on the top out to the uh, front corner, kind of an angled line down and, and take away from the tube, from the top of the brim, from the, from the top of the brim, 
up to the top, I like to have it kind of slope backwards. Otherwise, it looks very top heavy. Um, this one, I think, is still pretty top heavy compared to the bottom. Um, I think it could probably, just over the rim of the hat, it could probably come back another eighth of an inch. Uh, but the, the, uh, the tassel and the fold over part is about where I want it. Uh, but from here down to here, it probably could go back an, another eighth of an inch on that one. Um, this is probably about the same thing. Um, it, it's so hard to, to tell, but if, if the front of the toque is out as far as the brim, it, it starts to look top heavy. And this one I did better in here, but right up here, it's still top heavy. It, the funny thing is, as they say, which carving is your best and any carver will say it's my next one. So I'm, I'm hoping I'll get this one up more or less right. And I can still do a bit of repair work on these two before I put any paint on them. And I have a number of Irish friends, including my wife. Uh, so I made one for her to with a fridge magnet on the back and uh, uh, well, a magnet on the back, it becomes a fridge magnet. And uh, so that that's, you know, that's, we're pretty well there. Uh, we don't have to come back uh, unless you want to. Uh, maybe the next time we have a, a, a clutch uh, Zoom, uh, we could bring these along and demonstrate what we've done to them uh, before whoever is doing the next uh, project demo, or maybe we'll all bring our own uh, little carving to do uh, what, whatever Andy and the rest uh, work out. Uh, we can show what, uh, what we've done on these things. But I, I'd like to suggest that uh, it would probably be a good thing at this point because the rest is fairly straight uh, forward uh, at this point, maybe just to uh, have a bit of a visit time. Uh, go and get one of those cups of coffee. And uh, enjoy one another's company. Okay. Are know. there any questions for uh, John before we uh, close this session off? Drop your hand, you got any questions? Serge? You got a question or that's just your finger. <laughs> Try to unmute myself. There we go. John, can you put the profile again on the one that you finished, please? The, the, this one? Oh, okay. Now I see. Okay, perfect. I was just trying to see where the, the puff ball uh, looked compared to what I had. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Can you hear me? Hello? No. How, how do I unmute? You are it's unmuted. You're not muted. Okay, great. Would it be possible to get pictures of your, your final product? But I also would like to see pictures of the, you've got two or three that are in progress. Yes. Because it was a little difficult to see on the screen, but if we, through email or whatever, could get pictures, it could be a good reference, uh, good reference material for us. Okay, what I will do is to, uh, take a, a picture of the, well, I've got four on the table here, including the one that we worked on today. I can put them down uh, together and <clears throat> take a picture of them. Uh, will a picture, showing, a picture showing basically the front be sufficient? I'd like to see all of those. Yeah, but uh, just as, as much as you, possible, pictures are, are necessary for some of us. Maybe, maybe I'll do a profile and a front view and uh, uh, gather them into one uh, just PDF or something. 
perhaps I'll, send, I'll send it to uh, Andy, who I think has the, the overall uh, email addresses. Yeah. That would really help. Okay. I can do that. Great. And, Great. And Patrick, you're going to be putting up the, um, the video of this because I'm, I'm an even slower carver than John. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the uh, the video takes about the same amount of time for it to process. So okay. I've got some things to do, but it will be up sometime tomorrow okay. on uh, YouTube. John doesn't mind being a star on YouTube. That's and fine. then, uh, yep, so that'll, that, that, that'll be available. And as soon as that's available, um, I'll send out an email saying that it's available. Perfect, thank things, you. That's one great. of the things about the video that is probably good is that you can pause it. Right. And you follow it through and you come to one point with, oh, okay, I want to do more work on that before he moves on. So pause it and do you what you want and take it beyond that. That work for guys, for all of you. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks John. You. Thanks very much. That was great. It was great, you. John. Oh, you're all there, John. Thanks, John. W wunderbar. Uh, John, John.